We're mildly awkward, really derpy kind of anxious humans, so expect that. Welcome to Rhetorical K-Pop. I'm Sherston. I'm Aubrey. <laughs> We're here today because of a Tumblr post that I made at her insistence about a, kind of a teaser analysis for the rooms that you see in uh, the Vix Chained Up series. We were like, hey, maybe they'd like to hear more of our thoughts on the rhetorical analysis of the full music video because there's so much going on in it. There's always so much going on in Vix music videos, and we feel like it gets overlooked a significant amount of the time. So we decided we would just kind of get together and film videos just kind of explaining some of the rhetorical things that we see going on in different K-pop videos. And since today is my birthday, and a Vix comeback, and Leo's birthday. We figured we'd start here, especially since it's such an interesting video. And because we both love Vix, and Vix always has really fascinating rhetoric in their videos. And plus we were together because we were celebrating my birthday and dying over the comeback together. Anyway, when we were approaching this particular video, the thing that we noticed the most, perhaps because we're both theater people, is the use of space. And when we mean space, we mean like the actual rooms that they go into, in addition to actual places that they are seen. Um, and we think that the overall rhetoric of this particular video is best told through um, the rhetoric of these spaces. Obviously there are other things going on with styling and colors and stuff like that that we could talk about, but we didn't think anyone would want to watch like a six, seri six video series of like... About the lighting. All of the things. <laughs> we stayed a little bit more focused on two things that we found really interesting, which were the group spaces. And the individual spaces, and the differences between them, and what they do for the overall plot of the story of the music video. Mm-hmm. So the first thing right out the gate that we would like to mention is that we know that a lot of people um, see this, and the chokers, and the concept, and immediately go to bondage imagery or the BDSM community, and we would like to kind of take a deeper look at it to show you that it's not really necessarily about that. It's more about what a toxic relationship can do to a person, how that creates a sort of bondage um, and a feeling of being chained up. Yeah, because it's not necessarily about a kink fetish, because it's not being used in order to be sexually evocative, even though there are some really pretty sexy dance moves that are in it. That's not the message that they're trying to send. Instead, it kind of relates a lot more to Voodoo Doll, where you had a poisonous relationship that was controlling and destructive and bad, and that doesn't really seem to match with boiling this down to just focusing on mm -hmm. bondage as a kink fetish. Yeah. So the first major group space that we see is the daylit forest of magic and wonder, <laughs> which is actually pretty significant in that that is something uh, image-wise that we see both not just in the music video, but also in the CD. Mm -hmm. Even though the CD images were shot at night. It was still outside mm -hmm. in the forest, specifically in the Freedom version of the CD. Yes. Which is important because forests are associated with new life and new mm -hmm. beginnings and you know the great outdoors, this beautiful place that you can walk and be free and also get lost and never be found. And we see them walking and being free mm -hmm. at the beginning, but then they see the girl. And then we lose Hongban. He makes eye contact, but she actually ends up leading them into a cement space, which is we kind of refer to as maze land, where it's kind of the cement maze that's outside, but still dangerous mm -hmm. because she's there. Um, this is where we start losing members of Vix. They just, they make eye contact with this girl who is wearing a white and purple dress and they just start wandering off and disappearing into this concrete maze that has all of these crazy rooms in it. Yeah, and that seems to signify the shift from freedom to control. If you're looking at the names from the albums, which you know that was intentional, that they named them those things, and had that particular imagery associated with 
freedom being the forest, control being the chokers. So our next group space that we encounter is the room that we like to call the white suit room. Which is a fabulous room if only because dang those white suits. And the chokers. Oh. And the dancing. All the things. But rhetorically it is much more interesting than just the beautiful humans dancing in it. Because there's a lot of um, texture to the space that I think it's really easy to overlook because you're so distracted by, I don't know, Leo's belly button or something like that. Fair choice. But if you actually look behind Vix, you can see that the room is this tiled room that's really dingy and dirty and falling apart um, and has a lot of cracks in everything that you look at. Which is kind of like, um, since we're taking this in the direction of a toxic relationship, when you're starting to get into that, there are cracks that begin to happen. You kind of start to break down a little bit, as it were. And so the room reflects that broken down piece of that relationship as things sort of just start to crumble. Mm -hmm. And kind of the filthiness of it and the wrongness of it, because I don't think anybody particularly enjoys living in that kind of space. That's not the kind of space you want to be. Mm -hmm. If anything, the forest is the space where they want to be, but instead they are trapped in this dark and dingy space. So one of the many things that I personally really love about Vix is that they take the stories of their music and their music videos and they incorporate it really well into the dance moves that are going on during the live performance and then also during the music videos. Um, in this particular case, it was spot on. There is a huge shift in the dance moves depending on which space the group members are in. Particularly in the white room where we see the relationship beginning to break down or as we actually prefer to frame it, the point wherein the boys are actually starting to lose freedom and are starting to be controlled, that's when you start to see the whip imagery in the dance moves where Hongbin's standing center and is whipping everyone. And you see them bending their backs and crumpling, which means they're in the process of being broken. To reinforce that breaking or broken imagery, we also have a very interesting styling choice in this particular space, wherein it is the only time in the music video that we see the boys with chokers that are brightly colored. They have red, which is kind of the color of beaten flesh, you know, skin that's rubbed raw turns that color. And actually, if you look at the texture on the chokers, when I first saw them, this is going to sound super gross, but it looked like they had intestines ripped around their neck or that they had had the flesh ripped off right there. And if you're being whipped and beaten, that kind of damage is what's likely to happen to you. Or if you have a leash around your neck. Yeah, so it's being rubbed neck. raw, it's, it's chafed, there's kind of a lot of conflict, turmoil, and violence in that particular choker choice. So it's reinforcing that they're resisting being broken but it's still happening. Mm -hmm. In the dance, we also see an important cue that tells us the dramatic turn is coming. In almost every K-pop video that's got a lot of rhetoric in it, you'll see a dramatic shift where suddenly power changes in some significant way. In this particular video, that shift happens when we move from the white suit space to the black suit space. The way that they indicate the turn is coming is actually through Hongbin. Hongbin's a really important narrative figure in this one. In particular, it's when he is on the ground in the white suit space singing and then he gets grabbed and pulled back. Um, that serves to indicate that something is coming. And then we start to see, after Hyuk's little scene, then we see the flash between black and white, black and white. Yeah, and it flashes really quickly between the two. And then it goes from being the white room, the white suit room being the prevalent space to the black suit room being the prevalent space. Mm -hmm. um, they are actually, in fact, the same room as it were, but in the black suit space, there are sheets hung over all of the broken tiles and the cracks in the wall. Yeah, which kind of shows that now that the boys are completely broken, which you can also see reflected in the chokers that they're wearing, they're black, they're dark, they're dull, they're faded. There's none of that rawness that we saw in the other one. Instead, we're seeing they're kind of broken in, that they have been completely controlled. And so we're seeing that reflected in 
how in a toxic relationship there becomes a point where you just start to hide the cracks and to hide the problems that are going on because if you can hide them you don't have to face the reality that you're living in. In this space we also see the reinforcing of the narrative through the dance moves and the position of the members. In particular, what happens is you see Ravi starts on the ground and then he rises and as he's rapping, all of the other members grab their chokers and fall to their knees. So suddenly everybody's hitting the ground. They're completely broken. Reinforcing that image of they have no fight left in them. So something you should remember anytime you're watching a a video for really any music video, but particularly with K-pop, is they actually do think a lot about the visual rhetoric mm -hmm. in order to match that with the significance of uh, the lyrics, the dance moves are especially factored in in a lot of them, that there's a lot of layers that are working to tell you uh, what the real meaning is going on. And boiling them down to just one quick thought, one quick footnote, is not usually an effective practice because that dismisses the many, many things that an artist is trying to tell you. Particularly with a group like Vix, where they're beginning to have a lot more autonomy as a group and have a greater say in the overall construction of their work. So that's all we have. <laughs> I'm just going to go for it. Go for right. it. Right. So that's Right, so that's all we have for the group spaces at the mo at this moment. If you guys want to add to the conversation, we would love to hear from you. You can go ahead and comment down below or find us on Tumblr. We'll link to the original Tumblr post that I made that kind of inspired all of the things. We'll also include links to our individual Tumblrs just in general in case you want to talk to us, send us asks on there, or you can make comments below as she said. Um, if you're interested in other videos that we're going to be doing in the series, of course, please feel free to subscribe. Share this with your friends on Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, forums, all of the things, because we think this is an important conversation to start having about these types of things. So we will see you with our next video, where we talk about the individual, individual spaces. spaces. And then we'll wrap it up and kind of tell you how all of this factors into the meaning that we overall got from this particular music video courtesy of Vix. So we'll see you next time. Bye!